Have you ever been scrolling on your phone and you come across someone around your age or maybe a bit younger who's already accomplished your life goal? They have the house you wanted, the car, the friends, and every other week they're traveling somewhere new that you could only dream of going. Naturally, you start to idolize these people. You decide you want to be like them. You start putting things in place to make an attempt to do what they do, but some people will never even start because they don't believe in themselves. Others may be braver and give it a shot, but quit after a while because they failed. In both of these scenarios, a comparison was made between you and the person you look up to. You decided the differences between you and them was far too great, and therefore it's not even worth trying or trying anymore. Now that you've quit, you probably feel like a failure. Perhaps you blame yourself, or perhaps you blame other factors. You look at them and you say, it was rigged from the start. Maybe they come from money, they have the looks, the smarts, or you straight up think that the game was just rigged. You might even resort to thinking that they were a industry plant, or they just have some unfair advantage that is completely locked off from you. You see this a lot on YouTube, where YouTubers like to blame the algorithm for the reason they failed. And these people, they don't want to take responsibility. And I get that. It can be really hard to say when something's your fault. You see, the algorithm is really just a reflection of what the YouTube audience wants. Simply put, if your video fails, it's because it wasn't desired by the YouTube audience. And that can be for a multitude of reasons. If you have this mindset, you're setting yourself up for failure and you will not succeed. In this video, I want to tell you the truth as to why you keep failing and how you're going to fix your mindset moving forward. That way you actually get a chance at success. This video will be the most important video you could see and it will help you for the rest of your life because it applies to all aspects of life. So please stick with me till the end. In our society, it's expected for us to know what we're going to do with the rest of our lives from a very young age. And as kids, we dream big. I myself wanted to play professional hockey, despite never having even played ice hockey. If you're anything like me, you didn't just think you were going to do this. You genuinely 100% believe with all your heart that this is what you're going to do in the future, no matter how unrealistic it was. My experience. As you get older, or as I got older, I realized that this dream wasn't very realistic. When I was 12 years old, I still had never played ice hockey. For the very first time, I was left unknowing of what I was going to do moving forward. But I didn't stress as I knew I had a lot of time and I could figure things out. I kind of just expected that something would come along the way. Throughout high school, it felt like all you ever talked about is what your plans were after graduation. And year after year, I kind of just hoped that something would appear itself to me and be a no-brainer for what I should do. I used to tell people that I thought I would do something on computers, as it felt like it was the only thing I was competent at. But as I took more computer classes throughout high school, I started realizing that spending my entire life on a computer, perhaps at a desk job, was far from what I wanted. Also, in terms of what I thought would be a more fun slash creative job in game design, I realized I was really bad at it. I just struggled to learn code and I was really bad at it, so I gave up on it. You see, I like to think that I've always been pretty self-aware and honest with myself. I knew I wasn't naturally gifted at much, besides being pretty good at some sports. But academically, as I approached grade 11 and 12, I went from being good at math and enjoying math to being really bad at it. I was no longer picking up things. In fact, I started feeling like a really slow learner. It felt as though I had a mental block that was preventing me from learning, which now looking back, I believe it was due to my anxiety. I put in my best effort, but I started to realize that my best effort wasn't enough. The effort that was required to succeed in these courses was far beyond my comfort zone both socially and mentally. So graduation finally comes, and so does the question I have been pushing off for years. What am I going to do with my life? I graduated as someone who wasn't good at the major courses like math or science. And as someone who felt uncomfortable using sharp tools due to a lack of confidence in myself, it kind of left me in no man's land. I felt not confident enough to do a trade, and I wasn't smart enough to go to college or university. To this day, I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to end up doing when it's all said and done. But what I do know now is I'm more willing than ever to take risks and to do what it takes to succeed no matter what I'm doing. And as long as I keep this mentality, I truly do believe that I will succeed even if it takes longer than I hope. And that all leads me to now where I've been experimenting with a lot of different things and varying passions, just kind of hoping something would stick. And that's why I'm here now talking to you. Because this was something I realized that I really wanted to do. Being able to help myself while helping others, I realized that this could be the solution to the problem I've been having. I'm telling you all this because I've experienced feeling like a failure many, many times. I myself struggle heavily to not compare myself to others around me, those who are in university or college pursuing an education, those who just seem to have it all figured out. But you always have to remember that there's no one right way to live life. So there isn't actually such thing as being behind in life. And you know what? I might feel like a failure sometimes, but I know I'm not. Through every obstacle I've experienced in my life, I've made it through. And that's because I never give up. 
I may have changed course along the way and ended up in a place I didn't expect, but I don't see that as failing, as life is about adapting and overcoming, and trying to end up in a place where you're satisfied. So as long as I don't give up, anything can happen, and I do not plan on giving up anytime soon. Another personal example I have of comparing myself to others is through YouTube. I actually have a second channel called Ribisoft. It's a gaming channel. You can check it out if that's your thing. But through my journey of creating videos and experimenting with all that, I would compare myself to other channels that I looked up to. I would be so intimidated by the sheer quality and quantity that these other channels could produce. I thought I could never compete with that. But despite this, I continued on. I decided I wanted to improve each video and just try to have fun with each video if I could. And with each video, I improved. And as I kept making videos, I would slowly acquire these skills that I had overcomplicated in my head. A lot of things were a lot easier to do than I had thought. As I started learning these skills, I started realizing that I could actually do this. And if I could do this, then I could probably do all the other things that I thought I wasn't capable of doing. Each video, I worked on editing, music, all the aspects you can think of. And with each video, I improved at each different aspect that I would focus on. And before I knew it, I was confident doing all of them. The moral of the story is you never know how something will go until you try. So please just get the ball rolling. Also, I think it's important to realize that you don't need to become as big as these creators. You can find a perfectly fun and livable income in smaller niches, but you just have to grow them. You don't need to become the behemoth that Mr. Beast is. For my gaming channel, although it may not end up being success, I've learned so many skills that I can use now in this video or even use for other freelancing opportunities like editing for other people. I would never have these skills and this knowledge if I never got the ball rolling. So to make long short, take risks, try things out. You never know how it's going to go. You can only learn so much from videos like this. You have to at some point go out and give it a shot or you'll never know. What even is success? It's so important to figure out what success means to you. I feel like a lot of us have a really distorted sense of success. It usually looks like having money, maybe fame, or just having the respect of people around you. Basically, all the stereotypical bag chasing goals you see online. Success is defined by society, and I think that's the problem. You need to be able to define success for yourself. Figure out what you want, and better yet, what you need, and go for it. I did this the other day by making a mind map and just trying to figure out what were my true desires in life. As someone who doesn't typically use resources like mind maps, it really shocked me how helpful it can be to lay things out and just see it on a piece of paper. And it actually led me to this channel and the realization that yes, I want to help myself, but I also want to try and help other people as well. I hope to make a more in-depth video on the mind map and my experience with that because I just think it's so important and it might end up being a real turning point in my life. I don't know. It happened a few days ago. So hopefully you have your own definition of success. And if you have the basic society's version of success, it's not necessarily a bad thing as long as it brings you purpose. Society's view of success wasn't bringing me that sense of purpose. So if it doesn't bring you that sense of purpose either, please don't feel like there's something wrong with you. No matter what your definition of success is, you're probably going to compare yourself to others. You have this hope that you can replicate what they can do, but this can be super helpful, but also super harmful if done incorrectly. Life is unfair. Guys, life is unfair. It's true. It's just factual. And the sooner you accept this and leave it behind you, the better. Life being unfair is not an excuse. And if you let it be so, you are holding yourself back greatly. There's a term I learned from a YouTuber called Rui Ohama, hope I didn't butcher that, who heavily inspired this channel. It's called unfair advantages. Like I said, life is unfair. That's because these unfair advantages exist. Unfair advantages can be money, being born with money, looks, being attractive, height, especially if you play basketball, basically just anything you can think of that would be an advantage that is completely out of your control. Here in this graphic, you can see other types of advantages laid out for you. You got things like location, of course, being where you're born or where you currently live, your education, specifically the level of education you were able to receive. And finally, you have luck, which I feel like luck plays a really interesting role in all of this, because just like there is a wrong place at the wrong time, there's being at the right place at the right time and things like that just kind of happen and you can't really do anything about it. I don't think it's something that you should use as an excuse because it really won't benefit you and there are tons of examples of people doing the things you probably look up to without these advantages or without this aspect of luck. People easily see other people's advantages but they don't so easily see their own. We all have them believe it or not. Looking at me what are some of my advantages? Well obviously I'm incredibly handsome.
That was a joke and I'm really sorry. But seriously, I have my own story and this is one of the advantages you'll find in everyone. Everyone has their own unique story and it's something you can or rather you need to use, especially in scenarios where you want to become a YouTuber. This is what's going to separate you from the other YouTubers. It's just something that no one else has but you. Some other advantages I may have are location, given that I'm in a first world country of Canada. Although the inflation isn't great, I'm decently tall. People like to assume that I'm actually like 5'10", I'm, I'm 6'2". And one of the other advantages I look at is I feel like I've always had a pretty good natural grasp of English and writing and just like essays and all that stuff. So I would say that's one of my advantages. I don't know where it came from, but it's just kind of a thing that I enjoy and do pretty good at. So I ask you, please, if you're really looking to improve, whether it's on a piece of paper, your phone, whatever, I recommend a piece of paper, write down your advantages and see if you can use any of them to benefit whatever you're wanting to do. I know a lot of people on here are looking for YouTube advice. Trust me, your story. Start there and just see if there's anything else you can use. But even if you lack advantages and you don't have many, please don't use it as an excuse because it's not going to do anything but hold you back. We're not trying to make excuses. We're trying to succeed. And if you want to do that, you have to be honest with yourself and you have to be willing to take responsibility for your failure. The iceberg effect. For those of you who don't know what the iceberg effect is, it's when you look at someone who's successful and you see their success, but you don't see how they got there. So for example, we have Rui Ohama, the YouTuber I was inspired by a lot. I see her success. I see her million plus subscribers, her courses and you know, the income she's making and just the amount of success she has. What I wouldn't see unless, you know, I delve deeper, which of course I did, is that she's filled multiple channels. I believe she said she failed five. She's studied it like crazy. She studies YouTube like an absolute demon. Every single video, she just wants to know every advantage she can get. She's also played with different niches and just tried to see what would work for her. And that is the perfect example of the iceberg effect. It's essentially just looking at surface level. You have to dive deeper if you want to see how someone truly got to the success they have. The reason the iceberg effect and this whole topic is so important is so many people get discouraged because they don't realize how much effort these people are putting in. They think they're the only ones putting in this effort and you know they fill their channels and they just wonder what's wrong. But the thing is, if a successful YouTube can have five failed channels before she finally hit success, why can't you? She kept improving and that's what you need to do. This is also a place where I want to do a miniature rant, I guess. I feel like YouTubers or just social influencers in general get a really bad rep. And I get maybe some deserve it, but I feel like YouTubers and influencers don't get the respect they deserve for just how much work goes into being a YouTuber and influencer. I mean, there's just so many mental hardships you go through as a YouTuber, whether it's feeling lonely or receiving hate. You're constantly dealing with rejection as no matter how likable you are, people aren't going to like you. Now, I'm not going out there and trying to say this is the most difficult job there is because it definitely is not. I just feel like some people need to realize that not all influencers have full staffs that do all the work for them and some of the youtubers and influencers are putting in all that work themselves hours upon hours i want you to look at not only where people are now but where they were before before the money the fame the success how did they get there what did they do although it may seem like these celebrities and sports figures that they have these advantages that you just don't have and that's the reason why you can't do it but you have to realize for every athlete or celebrity that grew up in a rich family there's also celebrities who grew grew up in poor households or broken households. You may want to always focus on the fact that there's always someone living a better life than you. You also have to be aware of the fact that there's people living worse lives than you. You need to learn to be grateful for what you have and use what you have to your advantage. You see, those people who succeeded, who grew up having those rough lives, they didn't put these people on pedestals. They still thought they could do it, even if they didn't have the same advantages. Because at the end of the day, the thing you have to remember and just realize is we're all human. This channel you see today is not the final product. This is my very first video. It's the beginning. And even if it flops, I know I have a long way to go and I'm not going to be blaming it on any algorithm. Instead, I want to be studying and working towards my next video to make sure that it's 10 times better than this video. Or as Rui Ohama says, making each video 1% better. And as long as I do this and I keep improving, I know I'm going to end up somewhere new. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love this next video on knowing when it's time to give up.